Welcome back to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And wow, did we get an amazing update this year. Adobe really stepped up their game. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you a couple of these small updates and then we're gonna dive into the big update, the big feature. It's a huge benefit as far as adjusting images in Lightroom. And remember, these updates are also gonna be available in Adobe Camera Raw because the develop module in Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw are basically the same thing. You will be able to see, they might look a little bit different, but you're gonna see both options in both Classic and Adobe Camera Raw. The first one that we're gonna take a look at is right over here in metadata. And look, if you don't have metadata open, you just click on the little triangle and it will open. And now, as long as the preset is set to none, that we're not using a preset, and I, I moved this because I do have a custom preset, you'll notice down here, we've now got a customize button. So I'm gonna click that customize button and it's gonna bring up this little window. And this window is going to allow us to customize what we see right here. Let's say I didn't want something here or I wanted to change it. So let's say I don't want label, but I do want caption, I want file name, I want file type, and I can scroll down here to get basically anything that I'd want and I wanna do this, and I want my city. I can come down, hit done, and you can see it's updated what we see. Now look, when you import, you can still use a custom metadata template where it has all the information that we saw just a second ago. All this is doing is just showing us what we have quick access to over here. I love metadata. I use metadata in every single image that I use, and I think this is an awesome update. This is something I wish they would add to the photo downloader in Adobe Bridge. So we're gonna head and close the metadata and we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click on that develop module and we're gonna slide on over here to presets. So Adobe has updated and given us some new presets. Now I'm not gonna come in here and click through all the different presets, but I'm just alerting you Go ahead, open these up, scroll through, see what you like. They've got a whole bunch of new presets for Adobe Lightroom Classic. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna slide on over and this is the massive update inside of Lightroom in the develop module. You'll slide over here and you're gonna notice that this area has changed. That little adjustment brush where we would make a selective adjustment is gone. It's not really gone, it's just in a different location. And that has been replaced here with this masking icon. When I hover over it, it turns to masking. And what we're gonna do is click on that masking icon and it brings up this new area that we see right here. Inside of this new masking area, we're gonna skip these first two. Here's our old brush, it's still the letter K, nothing has changed. We still have linear gradients and radial gradients. We have color range, luminance range, and depth range. Up here we have two new options, and these were stolen from Adobe Photoshop. These are using artificial intelligence to make selections. The first one is select subject, which we won't be using here, and select sky, which we won't be using in this image here. But I will be showing you these in a second. So these are using artificial intelligence to make selections. We still have our brush, and then I'm gonna show you how the color range works now and how luminance range works inside of the program. So this is a little bit different. It's gonna take you guys a while to get used to it. Look, it came out yesterday. I don't get it in advance of when things are coming out. I tried this this morning, and now I'm actually using it. It hasn't been a long time that I've been playing around with these options. So let's come down here, and we're gonna click on color range. And when I do that, it brings up this window. Now it might, by default, open up as one of these little teeny tiny windows over here. This is gonna be your add to button. This is gonna be new for you and you'll see it here in a second. This is going to be your mask and inside of the mask, you're gonna have some sub-level options. And right here, this is what we call a quick mask. So when I open this up, you'll see it more. 
So this is the quick mask to make it show you need that ticked. You can see this is the mask and to create a new mask up here. The way this works is think of a selection and a mask is basically the same thing inside of Lightroom. The way a mask works is right now it's all black. Black means that it's hiding an adjustment. An adjustment is whatever you would dial in over here. So I would come in over here and I would dial it up. Nothing's happened because I haven't made a selection first. So I need to make that selection first. If you remember a second ago, I selected color range. So what color range does is notice that my icon is turned into an eyedropper. I can come in here and click and pick a color. And then Photoshop is going to pick anything that has that color and make a selection. The selection is the area that we see in red. You notice it didn't make a perfect selection because it's very specific. Now we can come over here and refine that selection by adjusting this slider. So as I go to the right, it's going to add more to that selection. And if I go to the left, it's going to remove that. Now in this case, we're going to go ahead and undo the overlay for a second. For you to see, remember I just clicked this little blue point right here, but there are some different shades of blue that we see. So this really isn't gonna work the best. So I'm gonna come down here and hit reset so we can redo this again. We'll slide down, we're gonna pick color range again. And this time, watch what I do. I'm gonna click, hold and drag and make this little box. So notice I went over to the lighter shades in the darker areas. Lightroom Classic is gonna look for all shades of this blue color that I have selected inside of the box. So it's gonna take a second, but now you can see it's done a much better job of making the selection. Now one smart thing that you should do is you don't wanna dial in an adjustment first because if you don't, it automatically shows you your mask. And that way you know what areas are being selected. Just like before, we can still refine that mask by sliding this little slider over here. We can also change the mask color. So notice right here, if I wanted to turn the mask off, I can click that box. If I want to turn it back on, we can click that button. Right here, we have three little dots. This is basically a settings menu. So we can click this, and this is bringing up different ways in which the mask works. Right now, we're doing the color overlay but I could do a color overlay on black and white. The black and white is the area not selected. We could do image on black and white, so we can see that way. We could do image on black, image on white, last which is white on black. And what this is showing us is basically the mask. So notice this mask and this picture are exactly the same. This is what a mask looks like. Now the cool thing is, notice we missed a few little bits right here and a couple little bits here. That's not a big deal now inside of Lightroom. What we can do, we have an add and a subtract button. In this case, we want to add. And how do we want to add? In this case, I'm going to use the brush. So now I can use the brush to add to the selection and I can just paint out those little bits that we're seeing in the mask and clean that up and make it look better. Just like the opposite, I could come in here and hit subtract, I could hit brush, and I could paint this area out of the mask. Remember, this is not being black or white into my photo, it's just showing us the areas where this adjustment is going to be applied. I'm gonna leave this here for a second, and we're gonna remove the overlay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the saturation. Notice this little spot up here, the color hasn't been removed, well why? Because in a mask, in a mask, wherever there's white, it's showing the adjustment that we dialed in here. But wherever there's black, it's not applying the adjustment. So that's why the, the flowers are still yellow, but this area has gone to black and white. If I wanted to add, I could click add, brush, and then I could just come in here and remove that. And you can see right here, we've got a little bit too much areas. These are things that are easily fixable. We can refine that mask. We're just not gonna go into it right now. So below the mask, we have some sub menus. 
and items up here. And what I'm gonna end up showing you here is resetting this and show you how to do something a little different. And maybe we'll just go ahead and do it on a different image so we have something new to look at. And let's go ahead and pick a new image. I actually think this one's gonna work good for what we're gonna do. Actually, this one will be better. So we're gonna go ahead and hit develop. So now we're gonna come up to our masking icon right up here. We're gonna select that. This time, we're gonna be able to select, select sky. Well, why? Because we have a sky. We will click it and see how well that Lightroom can select the sky in our image. And just like that, remember we're using the black and white overlay. If I wanna switch this back to the color overlay, I can do it like that. Looks like it's bleeding down on this way a little bit, but not a big deal. We can always brush that out if we need be. I can come in here and I can adjust my exposure if I wanted to darken the sky. And that looks pretty good. Let's say I just wanted to darken the sky a little bit. If I wanted to add some color, we can add some color to our sky. Now what happens if I wanna select this area? There isn't any foreground selection, but what we can do is come up here and click on create new mask. And we're gonna do create new mask with select sky again. And notice now we have the exact same thing that we did down here. But what we can do is come down to sky and notice this only works on the sub menu of the mask. So this area, we can come down to these three little dots and we can click on this and hit invert. So now instead of selecting the sky, it selected the opposite, which is like inverse on Photoshop. So now if I wanted to brighten the foreground, add some highlights and maybe some color, I can change that by doing an inverted mask. Now look, if we come up here, there isn't an invert. Invert is only available on these little sub menus that we see right here. Invert is gonna be located right here. So now we've created two masks. One mask to adjust here. If I want to work on that one, all I need to do is click on it. And then if I change the slider, you can see it's doing the sky. If I wanna work on the other mask, I click on it and I can come in here and slide it and adjust the mask there. So we'll go back to our library and we will pick a subject. We will pick, we'll do this person right here and hit develop. So notice this image is very dark. We're just gonna open it up in general a little bit. And now what I wanna do is make a selection of our subject. Inside of any photo editing program, most adjustments that you do are selective adjustments where they are in a specific area. So I'm gonna click on our new masking option. And this time I'm gonna hit select subject and let's see what Lightroom Classic does. It's thinking and just like that, it's made a very accurate selection of our subject. Missing a little hair, it doesn't have a refined edge like it does in Photoshop, but this has made a really good adjustment here. Just like before, we can always do an add or a subtract to this, but in this case, I think we're gonna be good. So then we can come in here and I'm gonna open up the shadows on her to just get it and lower the contrast a little bit. And then we'll just brighten up that exposure a little bit. And now we have a really nice selective adjustment just on our subject. So if you remember up here, we've got some options. One of the options is this little button. And this is kind of an on off switch. So this is what it was before, and this is what it looks like now. So much, much better selective adjustment, and it's more accurate. If I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hit create new mask, and this time I'm gonna go ahead and pick luminance range. When I pick luminance range, that's basically lightness range. So if I pick this area right here, it's gonna make a selection with any area that looks like that. Remember, with luminance range, you have the ability to refine that adjustment. And that is done right over here. So the box is the area that has been selected. If I want to expand that box, I wanna click on this little rectangle tab out here that we see right there. And, and I can expand that. As I expand that, it's gonna select more areas. I can also move this box to control the different areas that it's selecting. I can also come over here and make this more refined. 
until I get the selection that I want. Right now, let's say I wanted all this selected, but not her face. I'm not going to worry about the face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to brighten up highlights in this area just a little bit. But remember, I don't want this in her face. I just wanted this everywhere but her face. So what can I do? I can easily add to the mask. So in this case, I want to subtract. So I'm going to click subtract with the brush. And then I can simply just come in here and paint black. And that's going to hide this adjustment from her face right there. So if we come up here and select this, now notice that her face is not in that area. If I come down here and change this and look at her mask, we can see that oh, it looks like we even missed a little bit of an area. We can remove that. So anything that's white, it's being applied to. And anywhere it's black, it's not being applied to. So I could simply come up here if I didn't want it in this window, I could easily paint it out of that window 100%. And if I wanted to add to it to get all these little bits, I could also paint white into the mask up here to fix and apply that. Right now, we're still on the subtract. You can see in the middle of my icon, there's a minus. If I want to add, I just need to click add, go to brush, and then there's a plus now in the middle of my icon. And now I can add to that selection if that's what I wanted to do. You're using a mask to either hide or show an adjustment inside of Lightroom. Works really well. Takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you get used to it, it shouldn't be any problem using this. Actually, I'm a huge fan of it. I love selective adjustments, and I think this is going to be a great option for those of you who love using Lightroom. So the last thing we'll just cover a little bit on the gradients and radio gradients and how they work. They've been in Photoshop for so a while, but some of you might be new and never have seen this. Linear gradient works like this. The quick key is M, you click on it, and then you come over here and you make a little gradient. And so basically in this area, it's gonna apply the adjustment and then kind of fade it off into the distance here. And you can adjust that. This wouldn't be a perfect image for something like this, Usually if your horizon line was flat and level instead of being up and down like that, that's the reason I have this gradient kind of going at an angle. And then I could come in here and make an adjustment and make that darker or lighter. That's one thing that we could do. We'll hit reset. Next thing is a uh, radial gradient. So I'll click on the radial gradient and basically we'll just open this area up a little bit. I'll move that here. So now we're applying the radial gradient and if I wanna open the shadows up a little bit and make this area brighter, we're using a radial gradient to apply it to that area. And so the last thing I'll do is click on this image, and this would be a great image to show you how that color selection works. So we're gonna click on that mask, we're gonna come down here to color range, and I'm gonna pick one with a little bit of dark and a little bit of light in it. So we get a good balance of what's going on. So this right here. So what I'm gonna do is select this area, it's gonna make a color range selection. And then as soon as I come down here and dial something in, which is gonna be saturation, we're just gonna boost the saturation. Notice that it's just happening in that specific area. We could refine that, I'm not gonna spend time doing it, but that is how you use the new masking options inside of Lightroom Classic. Don't forget that I have created a Facebook group. The Facebook group is helpful in answering questions. A lot of times I get comments on how to do something, but I'm not quite sure what you mean. And by either posting a video or an image allows me to better answer what your problem or issue might be. If you do have any comments or questions, still free free to put those below and don't forget to subscribe.